ASO cadets, specialist officers, 2021 for details of the recruitment process. Then grab your local newspaper, The Daily Nation, on the 31st of October and 7th of November. The Star on the 5th of November, while The Standard will have those details on the 27th of October, 14th of November and 9th of November on my gov inside The Standard newspaper. The People's Daily on the 8th of November and 12th of November. Remember, no one can influence the recruitment process because bribery and other acts of corruption are against the law. Report any suspicious activities or characters to the nearest police station or military camp or call hotline numbers 0726419709 or 0120300599. KDF recruitment is absolutely free to all. For over 50 years, Athi Sako has empowered our members with financial stability through delivering integrated world-class financial solutions. We offer a wide range of tailored products and loans with low interest rates of 7.8% per annum. Get same-day approval for loans of up to 500,000 Kenyan shillings. Transact with ease using our mobile banking, Pesa Pepe, by dialing our USSD code star 879 hash or star 806 hash. Athi Sako is open to all members in both formal and juakali sectors. Enroll as a new member today and enjoy a career loan of up to 50,000 shillings. Visit our website www.athisako.com for more details. Athi Sako, Athi Kwa Ustawi. kwa mtazamaji kwa kuendelea kuitegea KBC Channel 1 popote ulipo na tunakutana tena kwenye darubini Ijumaa hii tukufahamishe mengi yanayojiri kutoka maeneo tofauti huko nchini jina langu ni Nancy Nyancha mtangazaji wetu ishara ni Susan Toko naitwa Harit Salim tupate vidokezo Jaji mkuu Martha Kome akosoa wito wa mtangulizi wake Willy Mtunga kuwataka majaji kugoma kulalamikia hali ya serikali kuu kukaidi maagizo ya mahakama. Shirika la KBC la tuzo kwa kuwa shirika la habari linaloongoza katika kutekeleza hamasisho kuhusu salama mwaka 2021. Ukaguzi wa kaunti za benki za shirikisho la FKF kwanza. Na mandama nasi mtazamaji hadi tamati. Jaji mkuu Martha Kome amekosoa wito ulotolewa na aliyekuwa jaji mkuu Willy Mutunga kwamba majaji wa Gome kulalamikia hali ya serikali kuu ya kukaidi maagizo ya mahakama. Kwenye taarifa aliyotoa leo Kome alisema kuwa licha ya sababu za kutoa wito huo ni muhimu kwa wote kutathmini athari za kile alichokitaja kuwa matamshi ya uchochezi yanayonuiwa kuvuruga upatikanaji wa haki humu nchini. We will petition that the judges of the Court of Appeal to down their tools in solidarity with their six colleagues that the president has refused to appoint on flimsy grounds and choose such a time that the president appoints the six judges. Ni matamshi haya ya jaji mkuu wa kwanza kuhudumu baada kupitishwa kwa katiba mpya mwaka 2020 Willy Mutunga kutoa wito kwa majaji kugoma ambayo huenda hayakumridhisha jaji mkuu Martha Kome 
jaji mkuu amewahimiza majaji wapuuze wito huo kwenye taarifa kwa vyombo vya habari kome alisema kuwa uchochezi kama huo kutoka kwa mutunga unanuia kuvuruga upatikanaji wa haki kwa wakenya Jaji mkuu pia alisema kuwa mtunga anafaa kuwa na ufahamu zaidi kwani alikuwa jaji mkuu wa kwanza chini ya katiba mpya na alikula kiapo cha kuwahudumia wa Kenya na Jamhuri ya Kenya kwa hikma na kutekeleza haki bila upendeleo. Jaji mkuu alisema kuwa athari za kuitisha mgomo wa idara ya mahakama ni mbaya. Aliendelea kusema kuwa ilhali kila mtu anaruhusiwa kutoa maoni yake ni sharti kumbuke kwamba iwapo matamshi kama hayo yanatishia maisha ya mamilioni ya wakenya ni sharti wote waungane kutafuta suluhu mbadala ambayo haikuki majukumu ya pamoja ya watu kulinda katiba Khalid Abdullahi Darubini Na serikali imetoa wito kwa wakenya kujisajili kuwa walipa ushuru ikiwa wanahitaji serikali kuboresha miundo mbinu utoaji huduma pamoja na upatikanaji wa bidhaa muhimu kwa umma rais Uhuru Kenyatta amesema kulipa ushuru wa Kenya watakuwa na uwezo wa kushiriki katika usimamizi wa taifa Kenya inawapiga kura milioni 19.6 huku idadi ya wale wanaolipa ushuru ikiwa ni watu milioni sita. Serikali inasema wakenya wengi wanahitaji miundo msingi bora, huduma za umma, upatikanaji wa bidhaa za umma, lakini hawako tayari kulipa ushuru. Expanding our tax base is key to bringing our nation close, closer to her destiny of a fair, just, inclusive and equitable nation as well as to fuel our nation's quest to improve infrastructure, service delivery and access to public goods. Zaidi ya walipaji ushuru 393 walijisajili kupitia mpango wa kujitolea kwa hiari na kupitia mpango huo shilingi bilioni mbili zilipatikana. Rais Kenyatta ambaye alikuwa akizungumza leo wakati wa maadhimisho ya mwaka huu ya siku ya walipaji ushuru amesema ukusanyaji ushuru umeongezeka kwa asilimia sita tangu mwaka wa 2011-2012 na kuongezeka kutoka shilingi bilioni na saba hadi shilingi trilioni moja nukta sita saba mwaka wa 2020-2021 Halmashauri ya ukusanyaji ushuru nchini ilipitiza alama yake ya kukusanya ushuru kwa zaidi ya shilingi bilioni 16.8. Wizara ya Fedha imetoa wito wa kuwepo kwa njia za ubunifu katika usimamizi wa ushuru ikisema ukusanyaji ushuru ni muhimu kwa ukuaji wa uchumi. We shall spare no effort in facilitating tax reforms geared at mobilizing revenues for inclusive national development. Beti Kiptum Derubini Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ameagiza Wizara ya Usalama wa Kitaifa kwa mashauriano na wadau kuratibu sera ya kulinda afya na elimu ya watoto ambao wazazi wao wamefungwa gerezani. Rais Kenyatta alisema kuwa katika kipindi chao cha kukua watoto wanahitaji mazingira thabiti na salama ya malezi ili kukua kwa njia zote na kuafikia uwezo wao kikamilifu bila kuzingatia uhalifu uliotokelezwa na wazazi wao. Continue to steer institutional reforms of the Kenya Prison Service to meet the visions set under our new supreme law. A key plank of these reforms has been to reposition the service from being a mere custodial institution to a correctional facility. Indeed, under the leadership of the State Department and Ministry, the service now places greater emphasis on rehabilitation and reintegration and the reduction of the tendencies of convicted criminals to reoffend. We are undertaking this solemn national duty so as to support those of our citizens who offend the law to realize the impact of their actions on society and to instill in them the need to be responsible and accountable in their choices and actions and to make positive changes for the future. It is very emotional, Your Excellency, to see uh, a female cadet officer commanding a parade here. Uh, I thank God that I have lived to see this in my country. And we have now moved a step ahead 
in terms of ensuring that we provide equal opportunity to our, our girls as much as we do to our boys in this society. Na shirika la utangazaji nchini KBC limeibuka mshindi kama shirika linaloongoza katika kutoa uhamasishaji kuhusu usalama barabarani katika mwaka huu wa 2021. Tuzo hizo za kila mwaka ambazo zinatolewa na kampuni ya Safety Plus ni yashiria kwamba shirika la utangazaji la KBC limetekeleza wajibu muhimu kwa kupeperusha habari na vipindi kuhusu usalama barabarani. Shirika la utangazaji nchini KBC limepongezwa kwa kutekeleza wajibu muhimu katika kutoa uhamasishaji kuhusu salama barabarani. Hafla hiyo iliongozwa na katibu mwandamizi katika Wizara ya Usalama wa Kitaifa Hussein Dado ilishuhudia kutuzwa kwa kampuni mbalimbali mbali, pamoja na watu binafsi kuhusiana na usalama barabarani. This event has brought together an extraordinary wide range of organizations committed to doing something to prevent and treat road safety in Kenya. Waliohutubu kwenye hafla hiyo walielezea masikitiko yao kuhusiana na takwimu za ajali barabarani zinazoashiria kwamba watu elfu tatu hupoteza maisha yao kila mwaka. Really, it is our lack of preparedness or our ignorance to modern technology that provides us with even safer solutions. Build capacity have experts uh, you know human resource that is more conversant about road safety walitoa wito kwa wizara ya elimu kutoa vitabu vitakavyosaidia kutoa uhamasishaji kuhusu salama barabarani kote nchini KBC na kampuni ya uchukuzi ya Precise ambazo zilituzwa ziliahidi kuendelea kutekeleza wajibu huo wa kuhakikisha kuna usalama barabarani. As KBC we are committed to making our roads safer uh, by airing more content on road awareness. We're going to keep doing is we're going to up what we have been doing. We're going to put the measures up. We're going to partner with the government in the in, in different initiatives that they are coming up with as far as the reducing the accidents on the roads. Tuzo hizo ziliwekwa msingi kwa maudhui kwamba ajali hazitokei mbali husababishwa. Ruth Kwamboi Darubini. Na naibu rais William Ruto amewataka viongozi wa kisiasa kujiunga na vyama vya kisiasa vitakavyoendeleza mbele ajenda ya kitaifa. Daktari Ruto ambaye alifanya mkutano wa mashauriano na viongozi kutoka mashinani pamoja na viongozi wa kidini kutoka Kangema na Madhio ya kaunti ya Muranga kwenye makazi yake huko Karen. Amesema wa Kenya wamejitolea kuunga mkono viongozi wenye ajenda itakayobadilisha maisha yao. Naibu Rais William Ruto amewataka wa Kenya kusita kujihusisha na makundi ya kikabila na badala yake kujiunga na vyama venye mtazamo wa kitaifa. Our politics will no longer be about your community, the region you come from, the color of your skin or the religion you profess. That going forward Kenya is going to build on the firm foundation of a political party that unites the country not an ethnic outfit. Daktari Ruto amesema wa Kenya wanafaa kuachagua viongozi wenye rekodi ya maendeleo na ambao wanazingatia hatma ya taifa hili. Aliwapongeza wakazi kutoka eneo la Mlima Kenya kwa kuwa mstari wa mbele kupinga siasa za kikabila. And they are pushing us and the nation to change the political formation so that Kenya going forward Our politics will no longer be about your community, the region you come from. Viongozi wa mashinani pamoja na viongozi wa kidini kutoka Kangema na Mathioya, kaunti ya Muranga ambao walimtembelea naibu rais kwenye makazi yake huko Karen, walishtumu serikali kwa kutumia uwezo wake kuhujumu siasa za kinyang'anyiro cha uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2022. ESC can be weaponized. This year can be weaponized. But we are not going to go against the will of our people by joining those projects. Usikubali kuambiwa fanya hivi na hivi ndio udhurumu watu wengine ukisahau kesho. All this using of criminal justice system will have to be accounted for.
Na speaker wa bunge la kitaifa Justin Muturi amesema kuna haja ya kufanyia marekebisho sheria kuhusu serikali za kaunti ili kuhakikisha kuna uhuru wa bodi ya kuajiri wafanyikazi wa kaunti kusimamia fedha kuambatana na sheria akizungumza huko Mombasa wakati wa kumalizika kwa warsha ya utumishi wa umma Muturi amesema kwamba ni uhuru wa kusimamia fedha utaruhusu vitengo mbalimbali mbali vya serikali za kaunti kuendesha shughuli zao bila kushurutishwa au kuingiliwa Muturi amesema kupewa uwezo kwa bodi za kuajiri wafanyikazi wa kaunti kutusaidia kuimarisha usimamizi wa fedha na utendaji kazi bora na kupelekea maendeleo ya kitaifa kupewa kipaumbele. Boards are actually very professional bodies. So they may have uh, issues that they want to articulate and ensure they, they are able they, they, they implement but uh, to the extent that uh, those may be at variance with what the governors themselves may want to do that creates a lot of uh, confusion Spika huyo wa bunge la kitaifa amesema bodi hizo ambazo zimejumuishwa kwenye katiba ya mwaka 2010 ambayo ilianzisha magatuzi pamoja na sheria nambari 235 ya katiba ambayo inaruhusu kuajiriwa kwa wafanyikazi wa serikali za kaunti It is important to to be priority based and customer focused The success of all policies and programs depends critically on hiring and retaining persons with the right kind of skills in a timely katika maswala ya kisiasa Muturi amesema yeye hajashurutishwa na mtu yoyote kutoka eneo la mlima Kenya kuania kiti cha urais. A day in politics is a long time. Eh? All you need to do is uh, activate your networks and I have networks across this country. Uh, just just watch the space and my my call is that uh, let everybody be given a chance to to tell Kenyans what it is that they, they, they believe that they want to offer Mwenyekiti wa bodi hiyo Catherine Umweru amesema hali duni za kikazi ni moja wapo ya changamoto zinazokabili serikali za kaunti akisema kuna haja ya changamoto hizo kutatuliwa The key principles of devolution is to take services closest to the mwananchi and this can only be done through a strong uh, a strong uh, skilled workforce which also requires to be motivated and to remain in the counties. Nikiripotia Darubini kutoka kaunti ya Mombasa, mimi ni Michael Mondiga. Na mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama KBC Channel 1 na tutatumai kuwa pia unaendelea kutufuatilia kwenye mitandao yetu ya kijamii pale YouTube KBC Channel 1 na tunakwenda mapumziko. Tarudi hivi pole. ili kupata sikiliza tune hii ya Warumi nane bonyeza star 811 star 963 hash Nina hakika kwamba hakuna kinachoweza kukutenga na upendo wa Mwenyezi Mungu si kifo si malaika si vitu tulivyokuwa navyo au tutakavyokuwa navyo si mamlaka au chochote kitakachoumbwa Warumi nane 38 hadi 39 ili kupata sikiliza tune hiyo ya Warumi nane bonyeza star 811 star 963 hash star 811 star 963 hash Welcome to Athi Sako Society Limited, a vibrant Sako that delivers integrated world-class financial solutions to our customers. Athi Sako will be celebrating 50 years of changing and touching lives in Kenya. The Golden Jubilee celebrations will be held at the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development (KICD) Simba Auditorium Hall on Saturday, 30th October 2021. This event will be covered live on KBC Channel 1 from 10 a.m. Athi Sako Limited. Athi kwa ustawi. Karibu mtazamaji viongozi wa muungano wa kisiasa Oka wameapa kuendelea kushikamana na kuunda serikali ijayo licha ya tetesi kuibuka kwamba huenda muungano huo ukasambaratika. Viongozi hao walianza kampeni zao rasmi ili kupigia debe muungano huo baada ya mkutano wa wajumbe wake mjini Kakamega Kinara wa Waipa Kalonzo Musyoka alitumia jukwa hilo kupozilia mbali tetesi kwamba anapanga kuugura muungano huo. Mwanahabari wetu Achola Simon na mengi. Wanaume wakati umefika tupate haki yetu 
wakati imefika hawa vijana watoke kwa barabara wakati imefika ni lazima chama cha kanu kiwe strong chama cha waipa kiwe strong chama cha fedi kenya kiwe strong na chama cha ANC kiwe strong mimi hapa kakamega nimejitolea kusimama kwa chama cha ANC sisi katika mkoa huu wetu wa western hatujawahi kufanya kazi pamoja kama viongozi leo tumeamua lazima tufanye kazi pamoja kama viongozi tukitaka kama jamii tuungane na wakenya wengine ndio tupate kile tunapataka simekucha siasa za udanganyifu Kenya zimeisha kwamba sisi ni timu moja ambayo hawezi kubanduka na mimi ni mchezaji wa timu na nikiwa kwa timu hiyo nataka niwahakikishe msifadhaike na jambo lolote ni yetu ni kuhakikisha vijana wanapata kazi unajua kwamba umoja wenu ni ushindi umoja wenu Kenya imepokea dozi la tisini za chanjo ya Pfizer, BioNTech ambazo zitumika dhidi ya ugonjwa wa COVID-19 kutoka Marekani chini ya mpango wa usambazaji chanjo wa Covax. Kufikia tarehe 28 mwezi huu jumla ya dozi 1500 jumla ya dozi milioni tano kumradhi laki mbili shina sita alf miya moja shina nane zilikuwa zimetolewa kote nchini kati ya hizo watu milioni tatu laki sita na arbaini na mbili alf miya moja sina tatu wapata dozi moja huku laki moja milioni moja laki tano thamani na tatu alf miya tisa sina tano wakipata chanjo kwa kamilifu wake wakati huo huo watu miya moja thalathina tatu zaidi wamethibitishwa kuambukizo ugonjwa huo kufutia au kufuatia kupimwa kwa sampuli 1522 katika muda wa saa 24 zilizopita. Wizara ya Afya nayo imesema kuwa kiwango cha maambukizi nchini sasa ni asilimia mbili nukta nne. Jumla ya visa vilivyothibitishwa sasa ni visa laki mbili hamsini na tatu alf miya moja hamsini na moja huku jumla ya sampuli zilizopimwa zikiwa zimepimwa kwa sasa zimefikia sampuli milioni mbili miya sita tisini na sita alf miya nane hamsini na mbili hiyo ni kufikia sasa watu watatu zaidi wamepoteza maisha yao kutokana na ugonjwa huo vikiwa ni vifo vilivyoripotiwa baada ya ukaguzi wa rekodi za vituo vya afya mwezi Oktoba na kufikisha 5573 jumla ya waliofariki huko nchini na kimataifa zaidi ya watu milioni 245 wamethibitishwa kuwa na ugonjwa huo huko zaidi ya milioni 4.9 wakiaga dunia kwa mujibu wa chuo kikuu cha John Hopkins Kuendelea mbele ni kwamba wa Kenya wamehimizwa kuchukua jukumu la kukomesha dhulma na ukandamizaji wote ule dhidi ya watoto. Katibu Mwandamizi katika Wizara ya Utumishi wa Umma, Masuala ya Wakongwe, Jinsia na Mipango maalum cha bi kilimo anasema kampeni ya kukomesha dhulma dhidi ya watoto haifai kwa chuo serikali pekee kwani ni swala linalohitaji ushirikiano. Kwa haya na mengine ni katika mseto wa yaliyojiri majimbo. Akiongea katika hafla ya uzinduzi wa kampeni yenye kauli mbiu Spot It Stop It katika shule ya msingi ya Kibera ikilenga kutoa uhamasisho kuhusu aina zote za dhulma dhidi ya watoto huku akitoa wito wa uwepo wa mabadiliko katibu mwandamizi katika wizara ya utumishi wa umma masuala ya wakongwe jinsia na mpango maalum chebi kilimo Alisema visa vya watoto kudhulumiwa vinazidi kuongezeka kila uchao. Alitoa mfano wa ubakaji, utelekezaji, kuumizwa na kudhulumiwa kuwa miongoni mwa madhila wanawapitia watoto mikononi mwa walezi. Children, the stories you actually share, you don't know it will save your friend, your colleague when you just share the right thing. So, I call upon the children who are here When you are playing games and stopping just tell the other one. You know we were in this place and I heard that they they said when you spot it you you stop it or if you can't stop it because you're young you can actually report to the chief you can report to your teacher. 
na serikali kwa ushirikiano na mwekezaji wa kibinafsi mmiliki wa jumba la orofa tisa lilopromoka katika eneo la OJ huko Ruiru katika kaunti ya Kiambu wameanza kuondoa magari yaliyoharibiwa na vifusi vya jumba hilo tayari magari sita kati ya 15 yaliyofunikwa na vifusi hivyo yameondolewa wakiwa yameharibika kiasi cha kutokarabatika Miongoni mwa magari yaliyoharibiwa kwenye kisa hicho ni yale ya kifahari yaliyokuwa yamegeshwa kwenye gereji moja kukarabatiwa vio kabla ya kurejeshwa mnadani yalikotolewa. Anguka rimeangukia magari zetu ambazo ni za uh, members wangu na pia hata mimi pia nimeadhiriwa kwa sababu kuna gari zangu pia na ukiangalia nyuma yangu utapata magari ambapo zimeharibika kabisa zimekuwa uh, light off kwa hivyo si gari hata uweze kuchukua chochote kile kiangalia hatuwezi njua mbele wala nyuma kwa sababu zimeharibiwa kabisa Kwingineko shule ya wavulana ya mkumu katika kaunti ya Kakamega imefungwa kwa muda wa juma moja baada ya moto kuteketeza moja mabweni huku baadhi ya wanafunzi wakikadiria hasara Kulingana na mwalimu mkuu wa shule hiyo Sylvester Ashoya kufikia sasa chanzo cha moto huo hakijabainika Tuwapee wiki moja ili warudi kama tumepata mahali pa kulala tunaomba wale wote ambao wanaweza tusaidia kuhakikisha kuwa within this one week hii dormitory imetengenezwa alafu tuwe na njia ya kunulia watoto vitu zao za matumizi na kwenye biashara wataalamu wa teknolojia ya kibiolojia wametoa wito kwa serikali kuidhinisha ukuzaji wa mahindi yaliyoimarishwa kisayansi baraza la teknolojia biolojia ya kilimo limesema kuwa mahindi hayo yataweza kuboresha uh, ukulima na yatasaidia kupungua kwa hasara katika sekta ndogo ya mahindi nchini Kenya hupata hasara ya takriban 40% ya mahindi kutokana na magonjwa na wadudu wa haribifu Kenya ni miongoni mwa nchi saba ambazo zimeanzisha matumizi ya mimea iliyoimarishwa kisayansi barani Afrika. Nchi hii ilianzisha ukuzaji wa pamba na mihogo iliyoimarishwa kisayansi miaka miwili iliyopita katika juhudi za kuimarisha uzalishaji wao. Katika muda wa miaka kumi iliyopita nchi hiyo imekuwa ikitafakari wazo la kuanzisha ukuzaji wa mahindi yaliyoimarishwa kisayansi licha pingamizi za baadhi ya mashirika ya kijamii. We have uh, cassava that received the environmental release in June 2021 and now the next stage is to perform national performance trials. The other crop that we have also completed research is uh, insect resistant maize that already all the research has been completed and now awaiting cabinet approval. Daktari Karembo wa baraza kuhusu teknolojia ya kibiolojia katika kilimo amesema kuwa mahindi ya aina hiyo yameendelea kukumbwa na changamoto zikiwemo wadudu wa haribifu na magonjwa ambayo hupunguza mavuno na hivyo kulazimu kuagiza mahindi kutoka nje. Kulingana na baraza hilo wadudu wanaoathiri shina uharibu asilimia mbili ya mahindi yanayozalishwa nchini huku viwavi wakisababisha hasara ya asilimia sitini Utafiti kuhusu mahindi yaliyoimarishwa ni sehemu ya mpango wa miaka kumi wa Kenya wa marekebisho ya ukuaji wa sekta ya kilimo kwa lengo la kuimarisha sekta ya kilimo nchini kufikia mwaka 2029 na kuifanya kuwa kitovu cha mazao ya kilimo kwenye kanda hii. Our farmers are always having these pandemics because many times they lose their crops because of insects diseases pests that scientists have a solution for so what we want is really upping and intensifying grassroots outreach so that the mwananchi can come to understand the value of science sekta ya kilimo huchangia takriban 33% ya pato jumla la nchi tangu kuidhinishwa kwa ukuzaji pamba iliyoimarishwa kisayansi kwa minajili ya kibiashara mwezi Disemba mwaka 2019 gharama ya uzalishaji pamba imepungua pakubwa pamba hiyo ina uwezo wa kuimarisha mavuno kutoka kilo tano kwa kila hekta hadi kilo tano kwa kila hekta hali ambayo itaimarisha pakubwa mapato ya wakulima
log on to the KBC website at www.kbc.co.ke to get the latest breaking news, entertainment, sports, politics, lifestyle or business trends from Kenya and around the world. Never miss new episodes from your favorite TV shows, reruns and movies. Just stream online or watch live on your YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1 TV shows for the day's biggest stories. Trustworthy news and family entertainment. Log on to KBC Channel 1. Watch what you want anytime, anywhere. Jumapili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC ungana naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi Ningetaka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday today and forever more he is able to take you to a place of abundance he is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ Kipindi ni neno la neema ukiletewa naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose Naam tukileta mchezo kidogo kazini ni kwamba ukaguzi wa kaunti za benki za shirikisho la soka huko nchini FKF uliagizwa Juma lililopita na waziri wa michezo Amina Mohamed ulianza leo. Shughuli hiyo inaendeshwa na wadau mbalimbali wa kiwemo wa wakaguzi au mkaguzi mkuu wa mahesabu ya serikali, kurugenzi wa upelelezi ya makosa ya jinai na vile vile msajili wa michezo. Amina aliagiza FKF kufanyiwa uchunguzi wa matumizi ya fedha kufuatia madai na tetesi zilizoibuliwa na wadau kuhusu ubadhirifu wa fedha. Afisa mkuu wa shirikisho la soka wa mwenchini Bariotieno alisema wakaguzi wanataka mtanganuo wa shughuli zote za kifedha uliofanya na FKF kati ya mwaka 2014 hadi kufikia sasa. Shirikisho hilo pia linatakiwa kutoa taarifa za udhamini kwa klabu zote za ligi kuu na pia kutoa mikataba ya kifedha iliyotiwa saini na wafanyikazi wa FKF na watizaji wa timu ya taifa. They have full access uh, for documents from 2016. Uh, to to date I, i think one one area of concern is it's not clear even to them whether fkf is a public institution or a private institution and it's also important to put it out in the public that uh, fkf only receives government funding for national teams uh, the rest of the funding comes from fifa comes from caf and comes from our commercial uh, partners we want to believe uh, and and from our discussion with the inspection team that uh, this process will be very fair transparent and 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 will meet the threshold of a uh, well done process ukaguzi huo uliamuriwa na waziri wa michezo balozi amina mohamed ambaye alifika mbele ya kamati ya michezo ya bunge juma lililopita frederick muki darwini michezo na mtukiendelea mbele ni kwamba masaibu ya FC Leopards yanaonekana kuendelea baada ya kupoteza mechi yao ya tatu mfululizo baada ya kulazwa mabao mawili kwa nunge na Ulinzi Stars ugani fika. Kumbuka kwamba Ingwe ilianza vizuri lakini ndio kama hivyo ikashindwa kufunga baada kupata nafasi za wazi Marvin Bwire alishindwa kupachika mpira wa vuni na vile vile Ulinzi walionyesha mchezo wa kuvutia na kufunga bao lao la kwanza kwenye kipindi cha kwanza kupitia kwa Brian Bergen dakika 42 kisha Hilary Simiu naye pia akatia mpira kimiani katika dakika ya 57. Ulinzi sasa iko kileleni mwa jedwali alama kumi moja mbele ya Nairobi City Stars na Gormahia. Historia hii kwamba kati ya mechi tano basi wameshindwa mara nne na kwenye mtambao wa goli lake na ngoma ikaendelea vizuri kabisa. E, vijana wa timu ya Ulinzi Stars pia walikuwa wanajaribu kuhimili na hapa ndipo mambo yalipokwenda segmenege wakati ambapo mlinzi wa timu ya e, Ulinzi Stars goma ilikuwa inaendelea kasi kabisa na hapa tena utaona kwamba e, 
barubaru huyu Hilary Simiu. Na wachezaji 15 utasafiri kwenda Namibia kesho kabla ya kuanza kwa mashindano ya mpira wa pete kwa wanawake barani Afrika mashindano ambayo yatatumiwa kama ya kufuzu kwa michezo ya jumuiya ya madola. Mashindano hayo yatangonanga tarehe mosi mwezi ujao na ataendelea hadi tarehe 16 mwezi huu. Baada ya kuimarisha mazoezi yao kwa kipindi cha miezi mitatu, timu ya taifa ya wanawake ya mpira wa pete iko tayari kwa mashindano ya bara Afrika yatakayotumiwa kuwa ya kufuzu kwa michezo ya jumuiya ya madola. I also very grateful to the government of Kenya through his excellency the president of this republic and our very embassy yes Amina Mohamed and our PS for having a facilitated and continuously sponsoring network otherwise we don't have any other sponsor but the government makes sure that we attend these uh, international tournaments Timu hiyo chini ya kufunzi wa Joseph Makao itanuia kuonesha mchezo wa kuvutia ili kujikatia moja wapo ya tikiti nne ambazo zitawaniwa. Mazoezi yetu yamekuwa mazuri despite of challenges the ground, training ground, but we thank God because ametuepusha na injury zote and uh, the training has been good. Wakati wa makala ya mwaka 2019, timu hiyo ilimaniza kwenye nafasi ya tisa. Frederick Muki, Darubini, Michezo. Sasa mashindano ya tenis ya chipukizi wa siozidi umri wa miaka 18 duniani yaliingia siku yake ya tatu katika klabu ya Nairobi Mkenya Derek Ominde alimshinda mjapani Ray Hatori kwa seti mbili kwa bila za sita nne sita sufuri na kufuzu kwa nusu finali ya raundi ya tatu ambapo ataminyana na Alexander Daskalovic wa Serbia na vile vile wakati huo Hiba Heni wa Tunisia alimcharaza Luka Victoria wa Ujerumani kwa seti mbili kwa bila za sita tatu sita moja huku Manale Nasri wa Morocco akimshinda Ronim Rusil wa Tunisia seti mbili za sita nne sita mbili mashindano hayo yamevutia wachezaji kutoka mataifa shina tatu huku Kenya ikitarajiwa kutwa ubingwa on court trying his luck to see if he can be able to make his semi-finals if that happens this will be really good for him because he'll be able to play finals tomorrow we are both from uh, Munich Germany and uh, we're here third time now and uh, playing this wonderful tournament uh, in this wonderful country Na mhayo ni baadhi ya tuliyokuwa nayo michezoni siku hii ya leo lakini sijui mwenzangu Nancy Onyancho ume saza kitu gani. Na mtazamaji bila shaka baada ya taarifa za sporti kabla hatujatamatisha ni kueleza tu kuwa kuna tangazo ambapo kesho matangazo ya ibada ya Adventist wa Sabato ambayo upeperushwa moja kwa moja kwenye KBC Channel 1 hayataweza kupeperushwa kwenye KBC Channel 1 kwa sababu ambazo haziwezi kuepukika lakini zitaweza ku matangazo hayo yataweza kurushwa kwenye channel ya Y254. Na mtazamaji kama ilivyo kawaida hatuwezi kuondoka kabla hatujakupa akiba ya maneno. Na mshasema lakini haya tutakuwa tunaangazia sasa ambapo kipindi cha siasa ndio kinaendelea uh, kushika kasi. Wengi wa wafuasi ambao wanawafuata hao wana siasa huwa kama vipofu. Wanawafuata watu bila kufikiria mara mbili. Una kuna upofu wa macho na upofu wa ubongo. Sasa hapa tunahimizwa tu tuwe makini kwa sababu tunachokifanya leo kitakuwa na athari kesho kwako na kama si kwako basi kwa mwenzi wako. Kwa unafaa kuwa makini. Ndipo wazee wa Himaza kale wakasema kwamba usihadaiwe na maneno matamu ambayo wanasiasa hupenda kuyatumia. Kama ni lazima uhadaiwe basi angalau hadaiwa na juhudi tamu. Yaani uone mambo yanafanyika ndipo na wewe ufuate. Sio unaambiwa tu hivi na we kabla mambo hayajafanywa mzima mzima umeingia kichwa kichwa. Kwa hiyo tunafaa kuwa makini wewe popote ulipo unafaa kujua kwamba usihadaiwe tuna maneno matamu angalau kama ni wako hadaiwe basi japo vitendo au uh, juhudi tamu. Na hiyo ndio akiba maneno siku ya leo jana ni Harith Salim asante sana. Nancy. Na mtazamaji nami naitwa na, nilikuwa bado <laughs> naendelea kuya <laughs> Digest mambo una, 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 una fikiria kuhusu jeu tahadaiwa mara hii na vitendo wana wengi na wala ahadi nyingi sana na mtazamaji bila shaka tuna la ziada ile kutamatisha darubini juma leo jina langu ni Nancy Onyancha mtangazaji wetu Sara alikuwa Susan Thoku tukutane wiki ijayo majaliwa